In 2015, Via Rail proposed High Frequency Rail, the lethargic line that Canadians had to say, well, geez, I guess that's what we're gonna get. We already know it's unambitious, but the selling point was how sensible the choice was about service improvements now, rather than grand designs for a high-speed rail at some point later. But if cleaning up and getting on the right track is the goal, is this actually a good way to do it? High-frequency rail was initially about getting dedicated tracks for Via. Even if they're slow, slower than Uzbekistan at this point, at least when we give passenger rail a separate space for service instead of walking on eggshells in a house of freight, service will be more reliable, more better, and better more. And with tracks finally under Via ownership, we can start chipping away and upgrading the speed to over 200 kilometers per hour. But wait a minute, Via already does own tracks. They've owned Vs between Ottawa and Montreal since 1999. So given that they're at the door asking us for money again, it is fair to ask, what have they da 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 done? Done with the tracks that they already own. According to my research, they have done sweet fuck all. A real odd choice given the arrival of new trains from Siemens capable of blowing past with loads at 201 kilometers per hour, but which have their speed capped below 160 kilometers per hour and usually much slower on all Via's current infrastructure. So what have they not done to speed things up? The first thing you need to do is remove crossings like this. For the speeds that we're talking about, this is mostly about avoiding trains versus car situations and trains usually win the battle but lose the war on that one. Slaying citizens is not a good look for a public sector rail operator. Currently there are 202 crossings on the route between Montreal and Ottawa, with an average cost of 80 million dollars to remove each. Ouch. The second thing is, I guess also physics, straightening the line. The straighter the line, the higher the speed. You can't be rapidly turning left and right. At the very least, passengers are gonna be throwing up, but at some point, the train throws up itself. Line straightening is quite challenging. All about land acquisitions and future planning, but the basics are you need a curve with at least a two kilometer radius. Looking at this bendy piece of shit, you can see that there is some work to do. Back in 2015, when Via was putting together its high frequency rail proposal and knowing these deficiencies with its existing infrastructure, I did start to wonder. What if instead of trying to expand their shit network, buying more bendy lines speckled with crossings, they went to rehab and put in the sober work of trying to make what they have good first. And while talking about this with Reese, we had a holy shit moment. That's like the correct solution. This should have been what they did. They should have proposed that as the route. So here's the pitch. We're gonna call it Via Fast. Oh wait, they used that one. Via Vite. So the first and biggest problem to address with the current high frequency rail project was all political. When the project was initially pitched and Via Rail were looking for private sector funding, it was to be... We're talking about Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, not the fullness of Quebec, Windsor, and obviously not the fullness of Halifax, Vancouver, strictly Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal. This is the golden triangle for any intercity rail project in Canada. And honestly, I liked it as a quick way to get going for a modest $3 billion. But when Via realized they weren't gonna be able to get the fiscally prudent version funded by the private sector, they adapted the pitch to sell it to the government by adding Quebec City. There was no way that the federal government was going to fund a project where almost all the rail lines were in the province of Ontario with nothing in Quebec. So they extended the proposal to Quebec City to balance the trackage out. But it fundamentally changed the project from this one that attempted economic rationality, maximum ridership per dollar spent, into something just totally detached from it. But what if there was another way to balance the federal government's equalization equation? What if instead of going big but bad, fear went better by investing in this connection between Ottawa and Montreal? These two cities about 200 kilometers apart are highly interconnected. Montreal is the regional big smoke for Ottawa residents. Across the river from Ottawa is Gatineau, Quebec's interface with the rest of Canada. For the mostly francophone residents, a trip to Mothership Montreal is a frequent one. Residents of Gatineau take via from Ottawa, <laughs> well actually they, they drive because the infrequent and slow train is not really a very compelling service, but they want to 
any service connecting Ottawa to Montreal checks the federal funding criteria box for appeasing voters in both provinces. But it's so much cheaper to achieve federal funding fairness by connecting Montreal to Ottawa and Gatineau than it is to connect Quebec City to Toronto. But what do you do with the saved money now that you're not buying hundreds of kilometers of freight tracks? It's time to plant some high-speed seeds. Seeing as Vera are already buying train sets that go 201 kilometers per hour from Siemens, the plan would be to upgrade the entire line from Ottawa to Montreal so that it can hit those speeds. But is it doable for a similar amount to that first high-frequency rail proposal? The first problem to tackle is the actual route. Via doesn't own all the rail from Ottawa to Montreal, so you have to choose which freight operator you will work with to take you home. Cheese nachos or cheese pizza? Canadian National or Canadian Pacific? I don't know. Metrolinx, who run the commuter rail services in the GTA, GTHA, sorry Hamilton, Metrolinx has shown that you can negotiate adding additional rails to the existing easement, which is what we're going to try to do with Canadian Pacific. So cheesy pizza. I went with Canadian Pacific for several reasons. Switching at Debogeux cuts five kilometers off the trip, but it also massively cuts level crossings, immediately reducing the number between Debogeux and the islands of Montreal from 44 to eight. Despite this, we still have 167 level crossings between Ottawa and Montreal. And this incredibly bendy, crossing riddled line from a junction up to Castleman. Look at the number of crossings between Castleman and the junctions. Look at the bendiness. Now look at the number of crossings on the Canadian Pacific line running parallel. Look at how straight it is. Investing in just 12 kilometers of new Greenfield line here to connect to Canadian Pacific earlier is a game changer. At a price of 55 million per kilometer, which is quite expensive, I'm being very conservative here with the assuming everything goes horribly, that works out to 660 million. The number of crossings for the equivalent trip goes from 104 to 21 crossings, with four of those being new. After doing this, a very minimal amount of straightening needs to happen. This is now a 176 kilometer line that is straight enough to run over 200 kilometers per hour once crossings are removed and the route is repaired and maintained better. 12 kilometers of new via rail, 59 kilometers of existing via rail, and 105 kilometers of Canadian Pacific freight rail. And these maneuvers have brought the crossing count way down, but there's more to trim. 47 of these crossings don't need to be removed with an expensive bridge or tunnel. They can just be terminated. For example, 17 of these are private crossings on farmland. Deals and land swaps need to be made with farmers. Buying land either side of a railway at an above market rate for future straightening projects or sidings. It's much better to buy off a farmer for a couple of million dollars than it is to spend tens of millions of dollars so that a farmer can a couple of times a day take a tractor across a train track. For the remaining crossings, I applied a simple set of rules, aggregating crossings so people have an option to cross within five kilometers and never leaving a community divided without a crossing to the other side. It's also important to remember, you can always add crossings back in when traffic flow settles and sometimes you can choose a cheaper option. Like for example, maybe it doesn't need to be a car crossing. Maybe a pedestrian crossing would be perfectly fine in a certain location and pedestrian crossings are so much cheaper. After all this, we are left with 37 crossings to remove, with 20 of them on the infrastructure VIA owns. Removing the ones VIA owns adds up to 1.6 billion. That means you can now run the first 71 kilometers at close to full speed. VIA's new Siemens trains are capable of going 201 kilometers an hour, so they'll be making good use of this infrastructure. Ordering five more to service this route is reasonable at a price of 175 million in total. But for this specific route, I'd suggest a commuter configuration with more passengers per car, because that's something you can get away with when passengers are on a train for a shorter period of time. And the way this train operates matches the seats. It's made for the masses to transport a lot of voters, not the luxury travel option we currently have that gets undercut by buses. It leaves every hour, you don't book ahead of time, you can just show up and go to Montreal or Ottawa. People walk through a turnstile and scan a card, just like transit, with staffing costs of just a driver and a customer service person to take care of a train. Did you miss the train or this one has no seats and you don't feel like standing? 
don't worry, there's another one coming soon. So why would this work? Initially, because it's way faster than driving. This modest upgrade lets you travel at 200 km per hour for the first 71 km, then 100 km per hour for the last 105. Factoring in acceleration and deceleration, you can get from Ottawa to Montreal in 1 hour and 36 minutes, which demolishes the 2 and a half hours it takes to bus or drive. And who wants to have a car in Montreal for a weekend? Seriously, come to Montreal for the weekend. Come get your ticket. Especially when both cities have large and growing transit networks that are all well connected to their respective stations. The bridge going into Montreal from Ottawa is also being rebuilt at the moment. For the next 10 years, traffic is going to be horrible, pushing those times up closer to three hours so the train will blast past. Van Vizzi Airport giving passengers the option to fly to Montreal instead of Ottawa for their international flights. Because yes, the train goes right past Dorval, so airport specials can be hooked up. You may also have noticed this plan is cheap. Two and a half billion dollars or so, which is significantly less than the initial high frequency rail proposal. But it gets fear on the correct alignment, so money can be actually invested, bringing up speeds by doing things like removing those remaining 17 crossings. So assuming the 2015 proposal would be around four billion dollars or so today, what would the remaining dollars get you? We could remove all remaining crossings into Montreal, or we could also electrify the whole line. But I think we run into this problem of paying to improve freight infrastructure. Rather, by making a deal with Canadian Pacific, we can start building a dedicated passenger rail line on their corridor beside their existing freight line. Going down the line, removing crossings, replacing bridges for Canadian Pacific, which is what is in it for them, and building via infrastructure another 25 kilometers towards Montreal for us. That would bring the trip time down further to one hour and 28 minutes. Go trains in Toronto have many people commuting for much longer than that. This investment effectively unifies Ottawa and Montreal into a labour market of over 6 million people, giving Canada a second Toronto-sized economic region. That's the political benefit for a maligned entity like VIA, putting themselves as the critical piece of a puzzle in creating that economic value, becoming an indispensable service. Right now, VIA is not GO. People in Toronto like the GO train and it's been well funded and grown as a result. You end up with a lot of voters on your side when you create a thing that they actually use. Creating an unbeatable service for around 20% of Canada's population for a minimal investment will literally and politically get a large number of people on board this all creates a base for expansion for VIA. Once this works, they can go to the government and say, we made a popular thing. People want us to improve it. In the same way that GO in Toronto has succeeded in securing absolutely massive amounts of funding by having a large number of voters using the product. It's much easier to push for higher speeds when voters are on board the train and thinking, oh yeah, that'd be nice, that'd save me an hour every day. The first obvious place that you would have support is dedicated track and crossing removals all the way to Montreal. Trips would be down to an hour if the remaining 80 kilometers were upgraded and faster. Want to get up to 300 kilometers an hour the whole way? This 18 kilometer bypass of Castleman, a few minor straightening projects and electrification would have people traveling between the two cities even faster for around just two billion more. Not a lot to ask when a lot of people are already going to be benefiting from the service. But at the same time, why not expand the service? The first obvious choice would be improving the lines to the west of Ottawa that VIA also already owns, building and upgrading rails between Ver and Toronto, gradually bringing down the travel time more and more. It goes without saying, with a route now known, the government should be strategically buying land and making deals for things like an Ottawa bypass, and of course, further straightening projects. So why didn't they do this? Why doesn't something like this get brought up as an option? It's because there is something broken with VIA. Their relationship with the Canadian taxpayer always seems to see doing better as expanding what they're already doing, rather than reforming it, finding the next fix instead of fixing themselves. Their financials put compensation and employee benefits under one $339.5 million line item. You have to use access to information requests to get any reasonable breakdown on what they do with over a quarter of a billion dollars each year. They sent back these 3D pie charts that indeed show high on train staffing costs. It's not a surprise they're high. VIA has a lot of very labor intensive customer service practices. Unlike most countries, VIA still makes you line up to manually check your ticket before boarding. 
staff stand to point you to your train car like you can't read. And then when you get on the train, you have to show them your ticket again and then do a safety briefing like an aeroplane if you're sitting beside the smashing hammer. I mean, it gives the staff something to do because they staff every single carriage. But when you realize that staffing is by far their largest expense, you can see they're not even trying to spend money efficiently and keeping things this manual is actually making it worse for citizens. I certainly don't like digging my ticket out a second time or lining up early to board the train. I asked Via for any reports or analyses they have done on how on-train operations could be more efficient, and that analysis does not exist. They spend $77.7 million a year for on-train and station staff who perform some pretty weird tasks by international standards, and they haven't even looked into it. Because they can't see their own shortcomings, they can't see the opportunities that exist to improve beyond more, more of the same. Why propose a radically different sort of service that gets voters support with commuter rail and then leverages it to increase speeds and achieve high speed rail when what you're doing is just awesome and only needs to be done more? Well, fuck you, Via Rail. Next time you ask for money, you better also be ready for rehab. time at the start and end of travel on both, but it's on average much greater for flights. Fuck you, truck. Trucks. Yep, good. Nailed it. I know trucks now. Brilliant! Original! Programming. Stay he rounded out his presentation with a quote, and I will quote him here, quoting someone. The system makes Francois' situation look like David and Goliath, with over a decade of rail politique. So we actually need to have like a public process instead of, you know, some people going into the VIA office and saying, you know what, I like trains, you know, you like trains, let's build a train to Peterborough, and it will also go to Montreal. I think Reese is right. Alright. Is that it? That's it. Okay.